we break up the factoring unit into a bunch of small little chunks of special cases. The first special case we already saw, and that was factoring out a GCF. And it makes sense that that was the first kind of factoring we saw because it was the first kind of multiplication we had was uh, sprinkling or using the distributive property. And of course, factoring out a GCF is just undoing the distributive property. So now we're going to look at techniques for a very specific case. And the techniques are gonna lay the groundwork for the general case, this type of factoring called factoring by grouping. So we have the special case of quadratic trinomials with leading coefficients of one. So that means I'm looking at quadratics that are one x squared plus bx plus c. And of course you remember, I usually don't write that one. So we're looking at specifically factoring quadratic trinomials that are x squared plus bx plus one, not two x squared or three x squared, but one little x squared. And the key to factoring is understanding the multiplication that created your polynomial, which in the case of a quadratic trinomial with leading coefficient of one is FOIL. Or you can think of it as Leo B, but I'm gonna be using FOIL all the way through this to do my uh, explanation of how to factor this. So let's just quickly look at just some really basic binomial times a binomial and see where the quadratic trinomial comes from. So first, f is from x times x, which is x squared. Outer gives me 2x, inner gives me 3x, and last gives me 6, right? First, outer multiplication, inner multiplication, last multiplication. And then where I get my trinomial is from combining the like terms, and I get x squared plus 5x plus 6. And every single quadratic trinomial that is has a leading coefficient of 1 that's factorable to begin with has a multiplication process like this that gives you that polynomial. And so the way to undo the multiplication is to do what you did in class last time with the fill in the blank part of that fill in the blank activity. Um, and it's just to logic through it. You know where this term comes from and you know where that term comes from. You know this comes from the x times x and this comes from two numbers when multiplied together giving you a six which is either a one and a six or two and a three. And you can ignore square roots because it's not gonna be square root of six times square root of six because there's no way it's gonna be five if it's square roots, right? And so you just have to pick which one of these pairs is gonna work and only one works. They both don't work, only one works. Now I know that it's the two and the three that work and where that two and the three come into play and how I know it's two and three is because of that five, because I had to add two plus three to get five. If I change that five to a seven, then it's not gonna be the two, three, it's gonna be the one and six. So you can factor anything if you understand where the terms come from. Now, of course, there's more to factoring than just sort of logicking your way through it. There are techniques to help you figure out what these are. And one technique is to draw these little rectangles. for multiplication. So if I have x plus 2 and x plus 3, x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, 3x, and then 6. And so if I think of my quadratic trinomial as being, I don't know, very Punnett square-like and getting me a, a 2 by 2 little rectangle, if I give you something else to factor, like x squared plus 3x plus 2, I can build my little rectangle and populate it in this corner with my x squared and that with my 2, and then I just have to figure out what went there and what went there to give me plus 3x. And 
then I just need to think about, well, how do I split up 3x? Because remember, 3x is generated from combining two terms. And well, I can't use 0 and 3. It has to be 1x plus 2x. So what goes in these two rectangles here are x and then 2x. And once you have your little rectangles filled in, you'll notice that the GCF of that column, x squared and 2x, is x. And the GCF of this column is 1. And then you'll notice the GCF of this row is x. And the GCF of this row is 2. And these numbers out here give you your factors because this is really x plus 2 times x plus 1. Now let's do another example, um, something where the numbers are a bit bigger. So when asked to factor this, you can look at this in two ways. You can either focus on the 20 first and then make sure the 12 fits, or you can focus on the 12 and make sure the 20 fits. And what I mean by focus in on the 12 is to remember that 12 was generated by adding two things together. So you can think about what two things added together give you 12. And you can have like 1 plus 11, and 2 plus 10, and 3 plus 9, and 4 plus 8, and 5 plus 7, or 6 plus 6. And you can split up that middle term into one of these six and figure out which one's going to work using either the rectangle method or some other method. But I think that's too much work because there are so many things that 12 can be broken up into. We didn't even talk about like negatives because technically it could be negative 1 and 13 or it can be negative 2 and 14 that generated that 12. So I don't like looking at it as that breaking up that middle term. I like to think of factoring as looking at what multiplied together gives you 20 because there are far fewer possibilities. Because I either have 1 times 20, 2 times 10, or 4 times 5. So my options are going to be x plus 1, x plus 20, x plus 2, x plus 10, or x plus 4, x plus 5. Only one of these combinations is going to work. And so now this is where that 12 comes into play because I have to remember that the 12 is generated from that outer and inner multiplication being added together. And so the inner multiplication here is 1x, and the outer multiplication here is 20x, and that gives me 1x plus 20x, or 21x. So it's not that one. And if I look at this one, inner gives me 2x, outer gives me 10x. When I add them together, oh hey, that's 12x. So it's this one. And if I look at this one down here just to finally eliminate it, I get 4x and 5x which is 9x, so it's not that one. So therefore, this thing factored is x plus 2 times x plus 10. So if I want to boil down all of that into some short thing to remember, is if I'm factoring x squared plus bx plus c, and remember, it's only one x squared where this, this thing holds, I am looking for factors of c, this last term, that add up to b. Let's do a couple of examples where the signs are different. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like drawing the pictures when you throw negative signs in there. So if I use this fact, the factors of c that add to b, and I look at x squared minus 11x plus 28, I am looking for factors of 28 that add up to 11. So I have two factors of 28 that add up to, I'm sorry, not 11, negative 11, right? And so this tells me everything I need to know about the kind of factors and their signs. I know that when you add them together, they're negative 11. 
and that when you multiply them together, they're a positive 28. And the only way to get a negative sum when you have a positive product is if both numbers are negative. So it's negative something plus negative something. And then I just have to run through the factors of 28. It's obviously not 1 and 28. It's not 2 and 14. It's not 3 and nothing. 4 and 7, well, hey, 4 and 7 is, adds to 11. So it's negative 4 and negative 7. So those add up to negative 11 and multiply together to positive 28. So therefore, my factors are x minus 4 and x minus 7. And this is one of the easiest things to check because either you can multiply it out or you can just graph these two on your calculator to make sure that they're the same parabola, and they are. And so now let's look at this example that has slightly different sign combination. So now I am looking for factors of negative 48 that add up to negative 2. And since they multiply to negative 48, that means one of them has to be negative, the other one has to be positive. And so then I can run through the factors of 48. I'm looking for ones that are two apart. And 1 and 48 are 47 apart, so no. 2 and 24 are 22 apart, so no. 3 and 16 are 13 apart, so no. 4 and 12 are 8 apart, so no. 5 doesn't work. And then I have 6 and 8. And since one is negative and one's positive, I'm looking for a difference of two. Well, six and eight have a difference of two, but I'm looking for negative two, which means it has to be minus eight and then plus six. And so then x squared minus two x minus 48 is going to be x minus eight times x plus six. And once again, these are really easy to check. Type in, type in, same table, correct. Now let's look at this final example, x squared plus 9x plus 7. I am looking for factors of 7 that add to 9, and 7's prime. So the only factor choice I have is 1 and 7, but when I add them together, I get 8. That is not 9. And so if there are no factors of C that add up to B, you have a special case of something that is not factorable because there are no factors of 7 that add up to 9. And we don't actually write the answer as not factorable. This is how you write the answer. You say prime over the integers. And the reason why you have to say prime over the integers, this thing technically is factorable, but it's not factorable with integers, which is the only type of factoring you do in Algebra 1. This might be factorable over imaginary numbers or radicals or something. Um, so we're going to say it's prime over integers, just like you'd say 7 is prime, right? Because it's only multiplied by 1 and itself, right? This thing, same thing. Now for your check for understanding, I actually have five problems that I'd like you to try to factor. They are all of the special case where the coefficient of x squared is 1, but there are a variety of sign options that I want you to see if you can factor.